Hello, how you doing? In this video, I'm going to talk about the perceptron. Have you heard the term perceptron and you're not quite sure you know what this is? Well, then watch along with me for the next few minutes and I'll quickly get you up to speed. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so what's the perceptron? Well, a perceptron is a simple artificial neural network model specifically designed for binary classification tasks. It was introduced by Frank Rosenblatt in 1958 as a computational model that mimics the way biological neurons function. The name of Frank Rosenblatt's 1958 paper is The Perceptron, a probabilistic model for information storage and organization in the brain. I shared a PDF link to this paper in the YouTube description. In this paper, Rosenblatt introduced the concept of the perceptron as a model for artificial neurons and proposed its application to pattern recognition and learning tasks. This work was a significant milestone in the development of neural networks and artificial intelligence. So what are the components of Frank Rosenblatt's perceptron? Well, the first is inputs are referred to as features. These are the values or variables that represent the characteristics of the data being fed into the model. These inputs are used to make predictions or classifications. The second is weights. Each input is associated with a weight, which determines its importance in the decision-making process. The third component is bias. A bias term is added to adjust the output independently of the input, improving the flexibility of the model. The perceptron computes the weighted sum of inputs, applies the bias, and then passes this sum through an activation function. In the basic perceptron, the activation function is typically a step function, which outputs a minor result of either zero or one. In summary, if the sum is greater than a certain threshold, the output is one. Otherwise, the output is zero. Today, when we think of modern neural networks, we normally talk about hidden layers. So how many hidden layers did Rosenblatt's perceptron have? Well, in 1958, this basic perceptron is a single layer structure and lacked any hidden layers. This limitation meant it could only solve linear, separable problems. With the basic perceptron being capable of classifying linear, separable data, means it could find hyperplanes separating data points in two distinct classes. Visually, in 2D space, this is a line. In 3D space, this is a plane. Although this basic 1958 version of the perceptron is limited to solving problems where such linear boundaries exist, it provided the groundwork for more advanced models that we see today. What type of learning algorithm did this basic perceptron use? The learning algorithm used in the 1958 perceptron is a simple, iterative method based on error correction. It adjusts the perceptron's weights and bias to minimize the classification errors on the training data. Here's a step-by-step -step explanation of how the learning algorithm works. Step one, initialize the weights and bias. Step two, for each training example, compute the weighted sum, apply the activation function, and compute the error. Step three, update the weights and bias if there's any error using the learning rate. Step four, repeat until the model converges or a stopping condition is met. This learning algorithm is straightforward, but effective for solving simple, linear separable classification problems. However, it struggles with more complex, nonlinear problems, which led to the development of multi-layer neural networks. Rosenblatt's perceptron was not the first artificial neural model. Rosenblatt was inspired by McCullough Pitt's neuron, also known as the MP neuron, which was a simpler model introduced in 1943. Rosenblatt's perceptron is a direct extension of this model. The key difference is that Rosenblatt's perceptron introduced a learning mechanism, which the MP neuron model lacked. Rosenblatt's perceptron builds on the MP neuron to solve more practical problems like pattern recognition and classification. I'll be doing a video in the near future showing you how you can implement an AND gate 
with a perceptron neuron using PyTorch. I'll also include a few more examples of an MP neuron implementing an OR gate and a NAND gate, respectively. This will give you a few more examples to check out. Keep an eye out for this video if it sounds interesting for you. In summary, while this single perceptron, as presented by Rosenblatt in 1958, has limitations, its significance lies in its role as a fundamental building block for more complex architectures that can solve a wide variety of computational tasks, making it essential to neural network-based computing and AI development. Okay, thanks for watching. This video, along with the, all my other videos in this playlist, are listed in the YouTube description. I invite you to watch other videos on my channel. If you like the way I'm sharing this content, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, this really helps my channel grow. One last thing, we all love technology and we're all excited about all the innovation with the cloud and machine learning and AI, but don't forget to carve out some time to live in the real world. Go outside, go swimming, go hiking, go climbing, go surfing, but get out and move your body. And if you do, let me know in the comments. I wanna hear about it. And with that, have a great day. Thanks.